Uh, I'm Walter Rowe. I'm the president of NCAS this year. It is my great honor to present the 2014 NCAS uh, Philip J. Class Award for Outstanding Contributions in Promoting Critical Thinking and Scientific Understanding. The, honor, uh, the award is uh, named in honor of Philip J. Class, who was a an aerospace, noted aerospace journalist and skeptic, one of the original conveners of NCAS in 1987, and a longtime mentor to our organization. If you want to know more about Phil's uh, achievements, you can uh, it's here in this brochure. Uh, among other things, he was one of the most noted uh, UFO investigators. Uh, you can also, uh, this year's award is going to go to uh, Dr. Steven Salzberg, a computer scientist and expert in bioinformatics. Um, many of us remember his excellent and important uh, NCAS lectures, on, one on the alleged link uh, between childhood vaccination and autism, which is still a hot topic, unfortunately. It has a rubber duck quality to it. Um, and his recent uh, one on the use of NIH funds uh, in medical schools to teach future doctors about treatments based on acupuncture and homeopathy, uh, that, which involve a little more than magical thinking. He has a blog entitled uh, Fighting Pseudoscience. It provides science-based commentary on topics such as HIV denialism, uh, anti-vaccine uh, activism, uh, health fads, alternative medicine, uh, GMO foods. Uh, it's, it's hosted on Forbes.com, where it reaches an affluent and influential community of business leaders and investors. As a computer scientist, he collaborates with biological scientists to, to tackle problems they can't solve on their own. He has in, participated in the Human Genome Project and dozens of other genome projects for many plant, animal, and bacterial species. And, uh, as a skeptic and uh, science commentator, his outstanding communication skills and passionate advocacy for the scientific method put him among the, the best in the business. Uh, we're pleased to have him uh, with us here today. Uh, Steven Salzberg, on behalf of the National Capital Area Skeptics, I present you with the Philip J. Class Award for Outstanding Contributions in Promoting Critical Thinking and Scientific Understanding. And Okay. I'll turn the podium over to you. Okay. Thank you very much for, for this award. I'm just going to talk for a couple minutes. Um, uh, I was very pleased and honored when I, when I heard that I was going to receive this award from, from NCAS. Um, I've been uh, writing about science and pseudoscience uh, on my blog since about 2007 and at Forbes since 2010. Some of you might have, have seen it. Um, and, and I often get asked, and I thought I would just comment on why, why do I do this? Because my, my, my day job is as a scientist and, and researcher uh, currently at Johns Hopkins University. And I work in genomics um, and um, a variety of related areas in, in uh, medicine. So I realized the, the reason I started writing uh, actually goes back to well before I started blogging. Um, was that uh, there was an, a number of years ago I was involved in a project to, um, a genomics project to sequence the influenza virus on a large scale, which is an ongoing project still, still running. And uh, I, along with hundreds of other people in, in involved in that project, were trying our darndest to make the flu vaccine a little bit more effective, a little bit more targeted. And this is not uncommon in the, in the world of, of vaccine research. Um, people spend their lives uh, trying to make things a little better, trying to make treatments that are a little bit more effective. And I discovered through that, and what actually it happened when I was being interviewed by a journalist um, about uh, one of the early results in the project, that uh, the journalist asked me, uh, you know, I heard that, that vaccines cause autism, and I have a young daughter. I was trying to decide whether or not to give her a vaccine. And that was the first I heard of it. This was about 2002, probably 2003. And... Um, at which point the vaccine, the vaccine uh, autism sort of mythology had, was growing rapidly in England. This was a British germ journalist, but not so rapidly here. And I looked into it, and I told him, no, there's not, no harm at all. It's, it's strictly beneficial. You should definitely vaccinate your daughter. But I started reading about it, and I realized that 
there's a community of people out there, not just in, associated with the vaccines and autism mythology, but there's a community of people out there who, who believe in um, what on my blog I call pseudoscience, and sometimes I use harsher terms. Um, and many of them are sincere. They really don't, they're not trained as scientists. Why, you know, not, most people are not trained as scientists. They heard about um, some particular um, practice, medical practice frequently, that's usually what I write about, like acupuncture or chiropractic or homeopathy, from a friend, sometimes from a family member, sometimes even from, a, from their doctor. And I realized that even though I spend still most of my time doing science and mostly communicating with other scientists about how our work is pushing the state of the art and whatever we're studying this year, um, that as a scientist, if I had the opportunity, I should try to communicate more broadly to people to say, look, while we're doing all this very technical stuff, um, there's a lot of things we've achieved in the scientific and medical worlds that really work. And there are people out there telling you things that aren't true. And if, as a scientist, I can get people to, to listen a little bit, um, I, I'd like to do that. So that's why I've been writing. My Forbes blog now reaches somewhere between 100,000 and 200,000 readers per month. So I've been very pleased at the response to it. And one thing that, um, that I've learned through that, and often the comments section, which gets quite, kind of has some, sometimes rather heated arguments, is that um, it's important that as, as skeptics, all of us try to, I think, try to communicate with not only with people who already agree with us, but with people who don't agree with us. Now, while there's uh, certainly people, and I've encountered this a lot in the, in the vaccines and autism world, um, and I sh let me just say, because it's on camera, vaccines do not cause autism. There's no link between vaccines and autism. And there have been literally um, millions of people involved in studies to show that there's no link. There was really only one small study ever suggesting a link, and that study was later retracted and shown to be fraudulent. But the damage uh, was extensive. So when you, when you encounter someone who doesn't agree with you, they might be um, uh, completely convinced of their position because of surfing the web a little bit too much uh, and, and irretrievably um, confused. But most people, I think, are not. Most people, they heard something. Uh, certainly when it comes to uh, medical treatments, um, they feel bad. They have some illness. They want to find something that will cure them. There's a, a still very large number of conditions that we can't cure and that this medical world can't cure. And so they're looking for an answer. And unfortunately for, for them, there's too many people out there ready and willing to give them an answer saying, this can cure your cancer, this can cure your pain. And in many cases, those, those treatments don't work. So I've uh, tried to learn, um, and I think we all should try to learn um, some skills to, that in our writing and in our, in, our, in our speaking to convince people to think skeptically about uh, what it is that, they're, what, that they believe. So if someone comes to me and says, I'm going to go to a chiropractor for my back, instead of saying, um, you're confused, you're crazy, you're an idiot, that's not likely to convince them. I say, well, you know, why? I, tr I try my best to say, well, why do you think that's going to help? Where did you hear that? Have you had any experience with this? Has it worked for you? And try to, try to get them to think skeptically, because I think that's the most effective way uh, to convince people um, to come to the sort of scientific view of things. So thanks again very much for, for this honor. I, I truly appreciate it, and I'm looking forward to our lecture today.